Cannabis, grass, ganja, Mary Jane, whatever the name it is that you have for it, can it help you to lose weight? I mean, maybe, or perhaps I'm currently high as we speak. Now, like most people, when I think about cannabis, I think about the munchies. And how on earth could something that causes munchies and you to overeat and taste all the delicious foods and stuff ever help you to lose weight? Well, while that may be what we see in pop culture, science, at least in a population perspective, tells a bit of a different story. You see, when we look at large populations of people, so we say go and look at America, and we look at all the people that are there, and we split them up into cannabis users and non-cannabis users, what we find is that the cannabis users tend to have lower BMIs as well as lower rates of obesity. In fact, one study from 2023 showed that cannabis users weighed 4.1 pounds less than non-cannabis users. Now, as a quick aside, generally when we're talking about cannabis users, what we're saying is people who use cannabis three plus times a week. And that could be edibles, that could be smoking it, whatever that individual's form or fashion is, that is what we're defining as a cannabis user. So what exactly is going on here? Have the cannabis users got this thing all figured out that we call obesity, or is there something else that might be happening? Well, it just so happens that we've been looking into this endocannabinoid system. It's the system that cannabis, THC, CBD interacts with within the human body for quite some time. And in fact, we used to have a drug on the market for weight loss called Ramonabant that acted at the CB1 or cannabinoid 1 receptor. What this drug did is it down-regulated the activity at this receptor, which helped to reduce appetite and for many individuals led to a weight loss of about 5 to 10% from baseline. Now, this mechanism of down-regulating that Ramonaband does is actually opposite to what THC, one of the active components of cannabis does. THC increases the activity at the CB1 receptor, and this ultimately increases appetite and gives you the munchies. Unfortunately though, Ramonaband was eventually pulled from the market because it led to feelings of depression and suicidal ideation. And this definitely makes sense. If you think about THC, yes, it's activating that CB1 receptor, it's increasing appetite, but this is also where it causes those feelings of euphoria, that chilling out feeling, that feeling of being high, et cetera, et cetera. So if we're having a drug that is down-regulating the activity at that receptor, well, we're gonna get the opposite of those high-type feelings, which could be depression and suicidal ideation for some individuals. And hey, if you're enjoying my content and want to learn more about how to manage your weight with and without cannabis, then you should definitely hit that subscribe button down below. As well, check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel, where I do an exclusive live with the OG members every single month. We talk about a variety of topics that don't usually hit my mainstream YouTube channel. And I also do a live Q&A, so you can bring your questions, concerns, and I will answer them in real time. So be sure to check it out. Links and the way to subscribe is all down below. Go and check it out and I appreciate the ongoing support. Now, if this whole cannabis helping you to lose weight thing is still not making any sense, trust me, you are not the only one because I was just as confused considering we just talked about a drug that acted opposite to THC, which is found in cannabis, and that opposite effect was what led to weight loss. How on earth can THC, which is activating the receptor causing the munchies, helping us with, with weight loss? I, I, I don't know. As the kids were saying on TikTok, the math was just not mathing. And so you're confused, I'm confused, and well, overall the scientific community really didn't have a good answer for us. But they did have some theories. So here is just a couple of them. The first theory was that taking cannabis and using cannabis helped to relieve and reduce pain. Redu relieving and reducing your pain level would then help you to be more mobile. It would help you to be want to be more active and go out and do things, and being more active would get more activity, and thus would maybe help you to lose weight. There seems to be this idea or correlation that people who use cannabis tend to consume less alcohol. And thus, if you're consuming less alcohol, maybe you're consuming less liquid calories, which then would put you into a calorie deficit or not put you in, into as much of a calorie surplus and thus not gaining as much weight. 
As well, there was one idea that cannabis users may have a more propensity towards using other illicit substances, and some of those substances may be stimulants, and those stimulant-based substances are then helping with weight loss. Another idea was that cannabis just helped people to chill out, reduced your stress level, having less stress meant less emotional, stress eating, less cortisol levels, etc., etc. So maybe something going on there. The next idea was that cannabis improves an individual's sleep, which I can get behind. I believe sleep is one of the single most important drivers of the obesity crisis, along with processed foods and such like that. But if cannabis is helping you to sleep better at night, you're going to have better control and better management of your appetite regulatory system. And thus, that's going to help you to make more nutritious choices on a day-to-day -day basis and thus maybe help you to maintain or at least lose weight. Now, another idea or theory that had a real big question mark behind it because it really was kind of a swing at the fences was this idea that cannabis may actually help to increase our metabolism and have some kind of role in insulin sensitivity. This is very, very preliminary kind of idea. Mostly it was seen in kind of animal studies and we actually haven't demonstrated the same effect in humans, at least not yet. So maybe there's something there. But I'm not really, you know, holding or hanging my hat on that one as, as being kind of one of the main drivers there. Now, the final two theories that I was able to pull out kind of have more to do with the other components that may be found in cannabis. So thinking that CBD has a bit of a counter regulatory effect, so it cancels out the effects of THC in some respects of things. Or if we only use CBD, maybe that's more the aspect and component that's then driving and helping with weight loss. Maybe, possibly, kind of, I again don't really know. And the other idea was looking at this chronic aspect of it. So cannabis users are the ones that are using cannabis three plus times a week. And maybe what's happening is they're actually down regulating that CB1 receptor with their chronic THC use. So if we're down regulating that CB1 receptor, they keep using cannabis. And if they're not getting or have as many CB1 receptors, what maybe is happening is that they're not going to get that same munchy appetite increasing effect as they normally would when they first used it or if someone who's never used or using cannabis for the first time would get in that acute phase of things. Maybe, possibly, you know, I really, I really don't know. Um, this was a pretty tough review to do because there was a lot of just the data was all over the place. There wasn't really any concrete conclusions. Um, we need, we really need to do just more research to really tease out what is going on and why on this population level we're getting this kind of response. But looking at the trials and that sort of thing, we're not, we're not seeing the same science. Again, the mathing is, is just not mathing. It was, it was really quite a painful review and um, yeah, it was a lot of half-baked kind of ideas. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm, don't worry, I'm, I'm here all week. And hey, if you're looking for a tool to help you with your weight management journey, then definitely check out the links down below where I've got my seven day food weight journal. In this journal, it's not about just tracking the food that you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis. It's actually looking at your emotions before and after a meal, which really are more important in the grand scheme of it. If you can identify what are the feelings and whether, how full you are and that sort of thing as to why you're eating, we're able to get a bigger picture as to what are the underpinning drivers. Is it because you're starving at a given point in time? Is it because you had a really bad day and you're now stress eating? These are all going to be things that create a greater awareness and give us a better picture as to what are the underlying factors of why you eat and can help you to make some changes moving forward. So be sure to check out the links for that down below. And again, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So in conclusion, when it comes to cannabis and weight loss, I don't know, the scientific community doesn't really know at this point. We need a lot more data to really get a good understanding of what is happening. What I can tell you is that it's probably a very complex interaction where it's going to be things like the individual genetics, it's going to be the cannabis product that we're using, the dosage, the various psychoactive components that are there. There's going to be a lot of moving parts and pieces and it's not just a clear and cut, it's THC or it's this that ultimately is leading to weight loss. And overall, I don't recommend running out and starting to use cannabis because you're trying to lose weight. Um, I think that would be a bad idea, in particular, if it is currently illegal where you are living. But also, if you're smoking it, it probably is not going to give you any benefit. And in fact, the risk of smoking cannabis is probably going to be more harmful for you than anything. 
And in my opinion, instead of looking at cannabis itself and the various components and things that can be made up from that, we really need to dig down into the specific molecules that may be actually driving these reactions and start developing and creating drugs around that in order to help with this weight management process if there actually is something there. And in fact, I actually think there's some data out there right now that's being done with psilocybin or magic mushrooms, which is kind of a different aspect or different area, but if we're looking at other components and things that are kind of gaining a lot of traction these days, that's kind of another cool thing that might be coming down the pipe and might be a future video. So that is it and that is all my friends, cannabis and obesity. I don't think it's the savior that we're all looking for. Cannabis might be useful for some other things, but for weight loss, I would say the jury is very much still out on it. And again, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it, like it, and spread it to all of your friends and family or anybody else that might need to see it as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on your notifications so you never miss out when I post another video. As well, don't forget to sign up for the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel. Not only is it a great support for myself because I do all of this in my free time, but you get the OG members exclusive lives with myself where we talk about a variety of topics to help you manage your weight in the long term. And of course, check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. We're on the tick, the talk, the gram, you name it. We are out there, so be sure to check it out. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, be sure to drop them down below. And as I always say, don't forget that it's going to be those small tweaks that lead to those massive peaks.